Hey there folks! Automated testing in a CI-CD pipeline is an awesome way to catch regression bugs early. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to run .NET tests in a GitLab pipeline. Alright, let's get started. Log in to your GitLab account and create a new project. Once that's done, we're heading straight to the pipeline editor. Let's tidy up a bit and get rid of this default template stuff. All we actually need here is the test stage. Next up, we need to pick a Docker image. We're going to start off safe and sound with the official .NET SDK image. For the version, we're going with 8.0 because Playwright currently supports it. It works with 9.02, but for now we'll stick with the safe bet. The script part's a breeze. We'll build the environment, install Playwright along with the browsers, and then fire off the testing command. Now if you're lucky, that might be all you need, but this is just the bare minimum. Later on, we'll spice things up with parallel execution, caching, cross-browser tests, reporting, and all that good stuff. As soon as I hit commit, the pipeline kicks off right away, but hold up a sec. We don't have any tests yet, so I'll cancel this run and clone this repo to my local machine and set up the test environment there. For creating the test environment, we create a new .NET nUnit environment and add the Playwright nUnit package. Now we've got a blank test and the setup ready to roll. Now, what I want to show you is how to run this environment inside the exact Docker container we're planning to use in our CI-CD pipeline. We'll run Docker with a volume parameter, which essentially mirrors our current folder to the tests folder inside the Docker container. That way the test run can read and write within the same directory. I set the entry point to bash, because I want to type out the commands one by one in a shell, and the last parameter is that same Docker image we picked for the pipeline. This is a safe way to prototype your pipeline scripts before committing. If you didn't have this image locally, Docker would pull it, but I do, so I'm right inside the container. Let's peek at the operating system real quick. Yes, it's Debian Linux version 12 bookworm. Now let's try running those exact same commands we put in our pipeline earlier, .NET build install playwright and .NET test. The test passed but keep in mind it's just a blank test for now. So, let's head over to the playwright documentation and grab an example test that we can paste into our test script file. There are two simple tests that go to Playwright web page and check a title and a heading. I'll intentionally type in the wrong expected text. It's way better to see how the pipeline handles a failure. And there it is, wrong text. We're all set to push these files up to GitLab. The moment GitLab gets our changes, it's going to start running the pipeline. So let's jump straight to the pipeline view and watch those run logs in real time. The job tanks just like we figured it would. The error says wrong text, so the pipeline is working exactly as intended. Right. Let's take our pipeline to the next level and add cross-browser tests and test reporting. We're going to use a parallel matrix to get those jobs running side by side and save us some time. In the matrix, I define a browser variable to hold the browser name and then reference it in the script. 
this is where you can add whatever browser you want, like WebKit, so we'll put our browser variable right here. Also, in the installation command, we'll specify the browser. No point in installing all of them when we're only using one. For test reports, we'll add a logger parameter to spit out HTML reports. And to be able to download them, we need to define artifacts. Just give them the path and use a double asterisk to tell the pipeline we want all the files in that folder. We also need to set the when parameter to always, because we want to get those reports even if the tests fail. And that's it for now, let's hit commit. All jobs failed, let's take a look at the error messages. They all show wrong text, which is what we were expecting. Let's check out the test reports next. Here's one of them, looking good. Now let's see how we can optimize this pipeline. We'll test different images and set up caching, both easy ways to cut down execution time. So, let's have a little competition to see which image makes our pipeline run the fastest, I've already set up a pipeline that runs these three different images. First, let's check the image sizes. Our first contender is the .NET SDK image, the one we used in our initial pipeline. It's a hefty one, over 800 megabytes which is quite big, but on the plus side it includes the SDK and PowerShell, so we only need to install Playwright and the browsers. Next contenders Ubuntu 24.10, super lean at just 80 megabytes, that's a tenth of the .NET image's size. Downside is, we have to install pretty much everything on it, and that takes more CPU juice than downloading. The last contender is the Playwright official Docker image, a real heavyweight at 3.5 gigabytes, that's a beast to download and unpack. But the great thing about it, is that we don't have to install anything at all. We just need to update the browsers, because running test automation with outdated browsers is pretty pointless. Now take a guess, which one do you think will be the fastest and which one the slowest? Here's the pipeline I've put together. There are three parallel jobs, one for each image. The .NET job installs Playwright and Chromium. The Playwright job installs only Chromium. And the Ubuntu job installs the SDK, PowerShell and Playwright with Chromium. To save us some time, I've already run this pipeline, so let's jump straight to the results, starting with Ubuntu. The tiny image pulling everything from the web took 1 minute 37 seconds, not too shabby. Next, the Playwright image. Despite its massive size, it ran in 1 minute 34 seconds, a bit surprising considering how much there is to download and unpack. And finally, let's check out the last contender in our competition. The .NET SDK image took 1 minute and 29 seconds. Looks like the best image this time was a sweet spot between having some pre-installed stuff and doing some installations in the pipeline. All right. The next optimization trick is adding caching to your pipeline. You can find some good info about caching in the GitLab documentation pages. But unfortunately, they don't have a great .NET example in their docs right now. If we scroll down the Google search results a bit though, we can find an example pipeline made by GitLab themselves. I'm going to copy this whole section about caching and paste it into our pipeline just as it is without changing anything.
I'll clean up the comments to make it easier to read. Now I'll create two jobs, one with caching and one without. I'll move the cache definitions to the cache job, so only that job benefits from caching. Before the script, it's going to restore packages, so the only thing I need to do is add the no restore parameter to the build and test commands. Time to test caching, let's commit and start the pipeline. One quick thing before we check the logs, I removed that failing test assertion from earlier. Cache only saves on successful runs, so we can't have failures here. It's usually better to cache build jobs instead of test jobs, but the process is the same for both. I'll collapse the log view so you can see all the steps nice and clear. Now we can see two new steps, restoring cache and saving cache. Restoring cache says, file does not exist. The reason for that is this is our very first run, so there's nothing in the cache yet. We need to run the pipeline again, to see the benefits. Let's peek at the saving step first. We need to make sure it actually cached something, otherwise why bother? The pipeline will compress these files and upload them to some storage, which looks like Google Cloud in this case. Let's rerun the pipeline. I'll add a whitespace change, but you could also manually trigger a job. There we go, they're done. The cache job took 1 minute 20 seconds, and the no cache job was 4 seconds slower. Not a huge win, but our pipeline's pretty light since there's no real build job compiling stuff. Let's first check how long the no cache job took. The part we're trying to optimize is the script step, and that took 1 minute. The script step of the cache job only took 39 seconds, so we did manage to save some time there. Restoring the cache took 16 seconds, and saving it took 0 seconds this time. Those are the numbers to watch, your time savings need to outweigh the caching steps. And that's a wrap, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this useful, share it with your fellow devs, see you in the next video.